Many years ago, an entire family was lost. The how or why are still unknown. Their house has sat empty for years now as the locals believe it is cursed and none dare go near it. The Duncombe Society for Cyclical Research investigates hauntings and strange events and has sent a small team of psychics to investigate and see if they can discover the truth of the house. Will they be able to find any answers? Or will they too find themselves victims of the house and what lies within it? Hello and welcome everyone to Mysterium here on Saving Throw for Gen Con Online. I'm so excited to have this bunch and to get back to Mysterium. It's been a really long time. Uh, if you are brand new here, I should probably tell you who I am. Otherwise, what, what is happening? I am <laughs> Megan Caves <laughs> and I will be your GM this morning, depending upon where you are. Got to make sure I don't say this evening. It's what I'm used to. Uh, yeah. Welcome tonight. Nope. Today, this morning, <laughs> we, we are playing Mysterium, which is based on the board game Mysterium. So if you all have never played that board game, it is a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Um, but it basically takes place in the 1920s with a bunch of psychics who go to a house and try to discover who murdered this butler in the house. So that's where my Mysterium has uh, been inspired from. Uh, and today we will be using the system Savage Worlds to play this game. And we will be using the Suede uh, or the Adventure Edition. So uh, let's get to meeting all of these fine folks here. So um, what I want from you all, tell them who you are, um, tell them who your uh, character is, and then maybe just a little bit about how they work, anything that jumps out um, to you as being important to maybe go over here at the beginning. Uh, and then also tell me what your uh, character wishes for the most. So I'm going to start with Randy. So Randy, uh, yeah. go for it. So hello, everybody. My name is Randy Alvarenga. I am playing uh, Jonathan Pruder. He is a young psychic uh, from America originally here in the UK. Uh, in Europe in general, chasing his dream of being an artist. So he's a painter. He uh, That's sort of what his background was. But um, someone found out about his ability, which all of us have uh, a psychic ability of some kind. And so his ability is astral projection. And so he has the ability to move into a spirit sort of form and manipulate things there. Um, and so now he's a part of the Duncombe Society and he's very excited to be here. And to uh, the thing he wants most is to make a name for himself. Part of him moving to Europe and abroad was to make a difference and to be someone. And so he's hoping he can do that with this investigation. Ooh, I like it. Yes, and I should mention the Duncombe Society. So for anyone who has seen Mysterium before, there is a character played by Jordan Pridgen known as Horace Duncombe III. Uh, very stuffy uh, man Horace is, but he has finally started the Duncombe Society for Cyclical Research and now has many psychics that are employed and that are sent out to investigate hauntings. And that's what we've got right here. Um, so Randy, tell me, you no, know, you did. You told me what your, your character wishes for the most. I like that. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let's meet Aliza. Same thing, Aliza. Tell them who you are, who your character is, a little bit about how they work, anything that jumps out to you, and what they wish for the most. 
Great. Yes, my name is Elisa Pearl, and I'm playing Shirley Ann Stevens, a 19-year-old prodigy who's freshly graduated from a special program called, called the Von Reichenbach program for uh, studying the odic forces, which are the kind of electromagnetic fields that spirits and living Ooh. things generate. And so Shirley has been with the Duncombe Society for a year. She graduated early and she's been working and uh, she is very plucky and um, she thinks she knows a lot about life, but she really just knows a lot about this one thing in life. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes she thinks she knows stuff that she doesn't. Uh, and she can be a little, um, uh, she likes to definitely share her opinion a lot. <laughs> Um, and what she wants more than anything is to get that big discovery of some ancient primordial spirit that is trying to like reach out to talk to us and be the one to like find it and talk to it and see what it wants to say to us. Mm, I, I like that. that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All, All right. right. Um, let's meet Diana. Same thing, Diana, who you are, who your character is, a little bit about how they work and what she wishes for the most. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Diana Restrepo. I am playing Stella Quinn. She is a 23-year-old. She works at the library. Um, she's kind of keeps to herself all her life. She's been made fun of because she sees spirits and she talks to spirits. Um, she doesn't have many friends. Her only friends are her three cats. And what she wishes for in life is to find her fourth cat, um, her, the spirit of her fourth cat, and to see how he's doing. No, kitty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you got my you like that? I did that for you, Megan. You kitty. Like oh, that? thank, thank you. Yes, like <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, now, same thing. Let's meet Omega. Tell us who you are, who your character is, a little bit about how they work, and what they wish for the most. Uh, hey, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard. Uh, I'm an actor, vocalist, um, hot mess incarnate is how I brand myself. Uh, uh, very excited to be here. My first uh, foray into Savage World. So let's see what happens. Uh, I am playing Augustus Robinson. You can call him August. Uh, he is a, a, you know, a broad, uh, tall black man from the in the 20s so you can just picture what that might be uh he is in college though right now if he's on the english side he's probably like abroad as well uh he is a for lack of a better word spirit guide because the spirit of his dead twin sister julia has always been with him she died at childbirth um and she's always guided him um to make sure he's the best he can be because again Black man in the twenties, uh, but uh, he, you know, he's just he's just trying to survive. He's trying to thrive one day at a time. He knows that he has this ability, and he knows that he has these uh, these abilities, and their their uses in the Duncombe Society are are are, are wide. Um, and honestly, as far as his wishes, he just wants his sister to find rest. Um, but he also knows that she won't rest until he's successful. So he needs to be fine before she can go away. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that. Also, you will never not see him with a uh, uh, coffee in his hand. He will always have a cup. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. I mean, got to have that coffee to stay awake. Sometimes. I should have got some coffee myself. <laughs> <laughs> morning. Awesome. Thank you all so much for those lovely introductions. Uh, let's hop right into it. So let me tell you what you all know before you arrive at this house. You have been sent by the Duncombe Society to go, uh, to, to, to go and investigate this house. There was a, a family there, um, the Windsors, who long years ago died mysteriously, and no one really understands why, but the locals uh, are very frightened of the house. They won't go near it. Um, and so this is a perfect place for you all to go and get your feet wet and see if you can discover maybe what happened to these people. Now, you have a photo of them. They are, uh, it is a mother, a father, and two children, a girl and a boy, and they all have very dark hair, limp, dark hair, really dark eyes, and sickly pale skin in this photo. Um, and you know their names. Their names um, are uh, Constance is the mother, Bertrand is the father, 
um, Alistair and Penny are the children. And there was also a servant that had died, but uh, the name you see listed is Molly for that servant. So that's pretty much the only information that you have. You know, this house is very isolated, kind of in the northern part of England. And we're going to start with you all in the car arriving to the house. Um, so who do you think might be driving this car? Anybody in particular? I'm kind of feeling like, oh, I see. Uh, oh, I see. We've got a frozen Diana. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm here. Oh, you're here. Oh, there you are. And I don't know why. And I apologize. No, that's everyone. okay. That's okay. You're not frozen anymore. But I'm, I'm thinking it might be you, Diana, simply because I'm in you... New York. <laughs> yeah, you're you're from New York. Um, also, because I think that um, you, I think, actually are the most experienced of this entire bunch. Okay. So you probably have taken a bit point. So you all have been driving for some time and you arrive to this house. And what you see is this giant, it's this giant old house that looks like it's been here for, you can't even tell how many years because it's in a pretty bad disrepair. It's clear that it has been com completely neglected and just kind of left to rot. You also notice that there's this big giant tree that is beside the house that almost looks like pieces of it are going into the house. But you can't fully tell on the outside. And it looks like around the house, there used to be a really beautiful garden, but for the most part, everything looks pretty dead. Um, so we see uh, Stella, who has just arrived, has just put the car into park and is getting out. Do you wanna take a moment to describe what we see, Diana? Sure. She's got two suitcases. Um, they're brown leather, pretty big. Uh, she places them down as the camera pans up. She's wearing this like cute little, like a like, little flapper dress. She has a hat. Her hair is a little bit like messy and disheveled because she doesn't really take care of her hair. She's more about mm -hmm. like a bookworm kind of thing and just focuses on what's going on. She still wants to look cute and she tries even though there's no one to impress. Mm -hmm. um, she's uh kind of short like me in real life so she's about <laughs> five four um <laughs> and she's kind of petite so she places her bags down she just looks up and she's just mesmerized by this tree and this house because living in the city everything is building and building and building and this is mm. just it's just a nice breath of fresh air Mm, mm, I like that. So as uh, Stella gets out and, and pulls out her suitcases and starts to look around, um, we have uh, uh, we have Shirley who is riding in the passenger seat and you see all of this as well and start to step out of the car. Do you want to ex describe what we see? Sure. You see um, a 19 year old who is dressed quite conservatively for the time. Um, she's wearing a frilly top and a long high-waisted skirt and some boots. She looks very English, very mm. proper and prim, and her eyes are wide and bright. Um, and she has like caramel colored skin and her hair is just neatly coiffed. Um, she just looks kind of like picture perfect. And she says, oh, what a lovely house. This is gorgeous. I wonder, I wonder there are bad things going on inside it. You know how that goes. <laughs> Beautiful on the outside, terrible on the inside. <laughs> uh, so as uh, Shirley says that, um, August, you are getting out of the back seat and uh, describe what we see. Um, you see about a six foot three, um, somewhat um, skinny, but still very firm, like in the upper torso area, um, wearing a sweater, uh with a nice little um little hat uh pants you know some high waisted not high waisted but high boots uh he's uh, he has a, a a suitcase in his hand looking around uh you can tell that there's a weariness in his eyes because he doesn't really go out <laughs> on these missions most oh. of the time <laughs> but uh he well you know ma'am i think we're going to be just fine uh, as long as we don't get ourselves into too much trouble. Mm. Oh, I'm sure we will, though, won't we? <laughs> I, I would hope that we don't. And he's about, sorry, about 21, 22. 
Okay, thank you. And Jonathan, you hear this uh, conversation happening as you two step out the other side of the car. Describe what we see. Yeah, uh, you see a, a shorter, probably uh, African-American male. Uh, he is wearing a suit. He is dressed as nicely as he can be with a very uh, bright colored vest on. He he is a, he very much cares about style. Um, and he's trying to make a good impression. Uh, he is sort of very kind-faced, but what you're noticing is that he just is very preoccupied with everything that's around him. Um, mm. As he starts pulling out his magnifying glass, he's like, oh, right, let's go ahead and, uh, I guess, start this investigation, right? Yes, and right. he is raring to go. <laughs> I like it. So uh, what you all see as you all get out of the car, first of all, you you, you feel there is a, a cold breeze. This is, uh, it's around early evening at this point when you all finally arrived at this house. So the sun is starting to go down and the air is starting to cool. There's also a bit of a, just a, you don't know if it's that you know this, something happened in this house or if there is really a strange electricity in the air, but you just can kind of feel something a bit odd. What you all do see is that the front door looks like it is open. Mm-mm, mm-mm, no. Whatever's <laughs> wrong, uh, You know, sometimes you just get these feelings that something is very wrong. Mm. Um, I would if the locals don't want to go here and the door is open. Who's mm. here? Mm-hmm. That's a great point, but I I think that's exactly why we need to go here. I'm I'm really excited to find out what's going on in there. You know, not all spirits are quite evil. Some of them are quite nice, so we should give them a chance. Mm. Mm. I mean, my sister likes to say, uh, uh, keep your eyes and ears open, but keep your mind widest. I'll go in and I'll uh, try my best to not judge. Everyone make me a notice roll. So for notice rolls, for any of our folks who are new, you're going to be rolling whatever your notice die is with your wild die and you're gonna take whichever is the highest. Five for Stella. Five. Okay. For John. Five. 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 Oh. <laughs> oh. Shirley? Fives have returned. Uh, notice. Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. Okay. Uh, that's six. Sorry. My sheet is very tiny. I have to fix that. Uh, so <laughs> you, <is your laughs> super tiny. All right. I got. Wait. Five. 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 No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is a good place to start. All right. I like it. So as you all uh, take a look around and and maybe edge a little bit closer to the house, um, you notice it looks like maybe there are some footprints. There are a few stairs that go up to the door and it looks like there might be a few footprints. And you all kind of notice this at the same time because they're, they're fairly obvious. It looks like somebody stomped around in some mud and then walked directly into the house. Hmm. Has it been raining lately? Would we would we would we know? Uh, is it close enough to the city where we would know? Um, I will say you could make a either uh, make a common knowledge roll. Okay, common knowledge. All right, I don't have much of that. Oh, <laughs> rip. Uh, okay, I got. Eight. Wait, I got six on the D6. And that oh, means the, oh, explodes. Explodes. Yeah. yeah. Roll it again. Yeah. yeah. Roll it again. So plus two. Wait, I don't add them together. I'm so sorry. No, no done. worries. Yeah, that that so, is the hard part. So you 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 are doing one die at a time. So if you got that six, then you're gonna re-roll that die. And yeah, you would add six to whatever that particular die rolls next. Okay, so six plus four, ten. Nice. Ten. Yeah. Yeah. So you you take a moment and you kind of ask that aloud, uh, has it rained? And you can smell on the air that it doesn't, it doesn't really smell recent per se, but it is fairly moist in this area. So it's possible that it could just have been nearby. You, you're, you're not sure, but it doesn't seem like it recently rained. Interesting. 
Muddy. I mean, the weather's been uh, quite fair. Yes, Stella. Unless, sorry, unless there's a well in the backyard of some mm. sort, or they maybe they were taking a dip in a creek nearby. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out why it's wet. That's mm. a good idea. And perhaps there is a creek nearby that might explain this. Hmm. Well. Oh, if you don't mind, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind getting back there and checking. Oh. Oh, yes, I'd like to also do just a walk around the perimeter to see if we see anything else. Okay. I can stay at the front door in case someone wants to welcome us in the other world. That's mm. where uh, I was thinking as well. You two can um, traverse the back as much as you want to. I'm going to stay up here. All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So Jonathan and Shirley, as you walk around the back, make a notice roll. Already split in the party. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's spicy. okay, we can run. We can run. Oh, I can run for sure. <laughs> uh, I got an eight, Megan. An eight. Okay. And I got a five. A five. Okay. So uh, as you all look around uh, the house, um, Shirley, you don't really notice anything that stands out to you that other than what you already saw from the beginning uh, or the front of the house is that uh, it looks like there's a there was a beautiful garden back here that has seemingly died. Um, but what you do see is that there is, in fact, a little creek that looks uh, like it is yes. behind the house a, a, a little ways. And kind of beyond that is a, a forest it looks sort of like a forested area. Um, Jonathan, you are also looking around and you don't see much more. It also seems like this area has been fairly left alone. But one thing you do notice as you all pass the big giant tree in the front is a bucket and a rag that is sitting uh, on that bucket. Uh oh. Uh, uh, Shirley? Uh, yes. If, I, I think I found something mighty strange. If. Uh... If the locals aren't coming to this place, uh, what would a, a bucket, I mean, it, does it look fairly, like, are there cobwebs on it or is it like someone has used it semi-recently? There aren't cobwebs on it. it. It doesn't look like it's covered in dust or dirt or anything like that, but it does look very old. Uh, all right. Well, it, it looks like somebody might have uh, used this here bucket and, and rag. Uh, it, it does seem kind of old, but... Uh, like it's been touched more recently. Hmm. So someone is coming here and possibly cleaning something up? Ah, uh, that's the best guess I got so far. I, I'm sorry. I'm kind of, I'm really excited, but, uh, I, I don't really know how to begin one of these investigations. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll catch on quite well. Actually, you already are. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> And he goes back to looking around. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else you all wanted to look at before you head, I assume, back to the front of the house? I'd like to I'd like to use my powers and see if I'm getting any energies, any electromagnetic spirit energies from the house. Okay. I love that. Um, yeah, so you will make a focus roll to do that. Okay. And then uh, you ha should have a casting modifier, so you're going to subtract that from whatever the total is. Oh, right. I think it's minus one. So um, mm -hmm. you said focus, right? Mm -hmm. All right. That's my D8. And I got a three on the D8. Okay. So with a three. Oh, minus I one. So that's two. Two. So. Uh, this is a good point to mention the bennies that everyone has. So bennies, they allow you to do a number of different things. You can reroll a die roll unless it's a crit fail, which is two ones. Um, you can also use it for a few other things such as uh, a, a cool story thing. So say, or say, for example, you uh, were in a situation where you need, needed a rope and you didn't think to pack one. You could spend a benny and go, ah, I did remember a rope. So it could be something like that. Um, I think that's it that matters right now. So if you would like, you could re-roll that or you can keep what you have. Hmm. I Would I re-roll the whole thing or just the D8? You would re-roll re the whole thing. Then I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. That seems like a good deal. Oh, wow. I almost got a critical failure there. Ooh, but I got yeah, two on the D6. <laughs> Oof. So okay. I did work. 
<laughs> <laughs> oh, and that is actually a good point. Unless it's a crit fail, you always get to keep whatever is highest. Oh, great. Whichever okay. roll is highest. Um, then so, then okay. So you take a moment and you, you focus to try to sense the energies, the odic force in the area. And you, you feel like for some reason it's, it's like you can't quite, reach it you don't know if it's that it's a new place you haven't gotten in tune with it yet but you just you can't quite get a read on the energies yet mm -hmm. i will have to perhaps get inside to get a better feeling hmm. anyway well shall we go back to the front i, I think that's a, a good idea right so Stella and August, you all have been um, kind of waiting here and every once in a while the wind will blow and as it does from the house behind you, you kind of hear this howling sound that that makes you feel strange all the way down to your bones, but it's probably just that the house is in disrepair and the wind is blowing through it. But as you stand there, not long after, Jonathan and Shirley return from uh, looking around the perimeter. Welcome back. Do you find you anything? Find anything? Hey. Yes. Oh, yes. Actually, Stella, you were quite, quite right. There is a creek back there. Hmm. We also saw a uh, Jonathan. Do you want to tell them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we found this bucket and uh, it, it is kind of old, but uh, it looks like someone's used it more recently. So uh, I think that's a that might be a clue. <laughs> They're probably trying to cover up the tracks. Yeah, maybe, I mean, yeah, the, those were pretty recent well, as well. Not those tracks. Right, they missed a spot. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's more than one person. Maybe, maybe there's uh, multiple people. But didn't the townsfolk around here say something about not, not, like, not coming up here? And that's exactly my concern, the fact that we're seeing info, information and, and evidence that someone's coming into this place. Mm -hmm. And very recent. Yeah. All right. It's getting a little chilly. It might be the wind. It might be something worse. And I would rather it not be the worst. So uh, let's just head inside and hope for the best. Just be on your guard. Um, I'll head in first. All right. Does everyone else follow? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So as you all walk into this house, and go through this door. This is a grand house. Even on the inside, you can tell that in its heyday, it was probably just an absolutely stunning house. Um, but now it looks like things are falling apart. There's dust, there's cobwebs, but it's still fully furnished. It's like they just left it as it was. And now it is starting to fall apart. One other thing you all notice is that, in fact, the tree has grown into the house. And you see in a few different areas that there are tree limbs that are winding their way that go through a wall and then go up through the ceiling. You mm -hmm. also notice that these footprints continue to go into the house. They go all the way up the stairs. There's a grand staircase in front of you. And at the top is this strange green door. But as far as you can tell, you actually see these, these footprints don't just go upstairs. There's also some that go off to the side down into a, a hallway in this house. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan, can I ask a quick mm -hmm. question? How Certainly. long has the family been like since the family mm. died? Mm. Uh, they died in the late 1800s, so it's been about uh, 20 to 30 years. Okay. Mm. Can you give us the names of the, the people that passed mm -hmm. away again, Megan, yes. please? Constance and Bertrand were the parents, uh, or the Lord and Lady, and the children mm -hmm. are Alistair and Penny. Oh, and this reminds me one thing that I didn't mention at the top that I wanted to mention. For those of you who know Zach Heidi, who has done ah. um, the <laughs> intro music for wild many of the wild cards uh, uh, um, campaigns here at Saving Throw, has been so kind to grant me the use of some of his music. So a little bit of his music will pop up here. I don't know if you all will be able to hear it, but hopefully at some point you will. So just throwing that out there while I'm thinking of it. Um, so... Yeah, you all are in this house and you do notice as you come into it, there is this wind. It's 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 a little bit more sheltered than it was outside, but there's still a coldness, a chill about this house. 
what would uh, you all like to do here? Question. The yes. footprints, you said one goes up the stairs and then one goes off to the side. Does mm-hmm. it seem like footprints that separate it or does it seem like they went up and then someone came down? It, it looks like it's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like it's all the same foot size. So and as you come in here, you can kind of see that the, the footprints are they're garbled. So it kind of looks like somebody has come up and down and kind of traveled those same footprints back and forth. Gotcha. Hmm. All right. So um, are the footprints different sizes, Megan? Do they look like different? No, same. As far as you can tell, they all look the same. Um, everyone make a uh, another notice roll for me. Four. Four. Ooh. You got another exploding die. Me too. Oh, me too. Oh. Me too. Uh, so for crit failing, is it both die needs to be one or one needs to be one? Both die have to be one. Okay, then I'm good. So I have four. Four. Okay, two fours and... 20. 20! It exploded. Yeah, 6, 12, 18, 19, 20. Wow. Yeah. I got nine. Nine. Okay. Welcome to Savage Worlds. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Wow. So uh, so as you all look around sort of in this entryway, um, August, you notice that the footprints that are on the... um, that are leading, not going up the stairs, but kind of leading down a hallway. They seem to go into a, a room. The door is slightly cracked and ajar. Um, Stella, mm-hmm. you uh, you also notice that these footprints, um, they as they go up, up the stairs, you kind of go up the stairs enough to be able to see where they go from there. And they go off two different directions up the stairs as well into as well as into the room with the green door that's right at the top of the stairs. Um, and oh, actually, still, I have something more for you because you got the 20. Um, Jonathan, you uh, you notice that there are uh, a bunch of what look like um, maybe pictures or paintings that have been that have them that have been covered. Um, surely, you also notice um, that there is a lot of wetness here in the house that seems to kind of correlate. It, it almost looks like when you look at the footprints, like there are water stains or or some kind of liquid stains that kind of pop up every once in a while around those, those footprints. Stella, you also notice that some of these... Um, that these these pictures or something have been covered, but you see one that is uncovered and you see the same family. This this is the same people you think from from the photo, but they look entirely different. They have blonde, curly hair. They have rosy cheeks. They have eyes that are not dark. They're blue, they're green, all these different colors. It looks like the same family, but they look entirely different. Does it look like a different time period as well? Like a different... It's hard to tell because this is a portrait that looks like it it, it was done, um, but it looks similar. Hmm. Is anyone near me up here? Um, I, everybody, I think, is relatively close by unless anyone has uh, followed anything further since then. Okay, then I would point it out and be like, um, this is the family as well as that family. I don't know why they look different, though. Do you guys see all? Do you guys see that? Sorry, um, two different pictures, same group, but they look different. Yeah, it's like their hair color, the every their eye color, their skin color, everything looks different. They look much healthier in this in this picture than they do the picture that you all have. All right, um, more explaining question. Um, skin color looks different as if they just look healthier like they're younger or they look like completely different people they almost look like completely different people it does look like healthier it's not like they were almost so pale in the photo that you had that they they look like they had no color at all in this they look healthier but not younger Mm. oh okay that's 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 a concern yeah that's a bit Mm -hmm. scary (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, I, I have an idea. I'd like to uh, use my gift. Uh, mm. um, can one of you just 
make sure that nothing happens to me while I'm gone. And uh, he, he sort of sits down on the floor, closes his eyes, and from, and I'm going to roll. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so let's see what happens, actually. All right. Uh, it's smarts, right? Ooh. Uh, focus. You will focus. be rolling focus for this. Thank you. So that is different. Mm -hmm. uh, give me one second. I'm going to reroll that thing. No worries. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Nope. Focus. <laughs> reroll, you said? Uh, no, no, no. I, uh, I rolled oh, uh, a D8. The wrong guy. Of oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, but I will be using a Benny because uh, <laughs> okay. oh. I am down one now. Six and yeah, six. six. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, with a six, you are able to take a moment and, um, you are, sorry, let me pull up the thing I'm trying to pull up here. I heard a cat. <gasps> me too. Uh, I'm <laughs> Not sorry. <for> me. <laughs> no, I love it. Um, so you all see that Jonathan sits down, closes his eyes, takes the deep breath, and then you all pretty much just see that he, he sits there. But, Jonathan, you experience something different. So where is it that you are hoping to go? I want to... First, I want to see if uh, I can... Uh, see any spirits or like interact with like anything that feels weird i would love to go in that green door but i don't think i can with the with the six so <laughs> oh yes you would need a raise yeah. you could so for anyone who doesn't know in this game uh for every four over the target number or every four points that you get is considered a raise so for example if your target number is four and you roll an eight you've you've gotten a success with a raise. Um, so you could try to re-roll it once again if you wanted to try to achieve that raise. I, ro I rolled a nine with the minus two, so, or uh, okay. with the, so okay. I don't think I'm gonna get that. So okay. uh, <laughs> with my <laughs> six, I'm going to uh, just sort of, I guess follow the footsteps as, as long as I can, see if there's anything strange that I okay. noticed. So it sounds like you were wanting to hop up kind of next to that green door at the very least. Then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, you are able to do that. Uh, and you see that that door, there's a, there's a lock in it. Um, you aren't able to necessarily check it in this state because what has happened here is uh, Jonathan has astral projected. So essentially, uh, Jonathan's Ooh. body is still downstairs, but his spirit has been projected up to the top of uh, the staircase here. And you're able to look around. So once you get up there, um, you see that the footprints lead off in both kind of directions from that green door and into the green door, like I said before. Um, and if you follow in either one of those directions, you notice, um, let's say you go to the left, you notice that these footprints lead off um, into two other doors as well. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go back and sort of uh, shake my head. Um, you guys see him sort of wake up. It, it Like he went completely limp for a moment. Um, and now that he's back, he goes, uh, so I, I was following those uh, footsteps upstairs a little bit. Obviously, uh, they went into the green door. There's a lock there. Uh, I couldn't get past that for some reason. And uh, there's some more doors up there. It looks like people were checking out all the rooms in here. And I mean, I didn't quite see any spirits or anything, but uh, it's definitely question, suspicious. Question, when Jonathan went under, like, limp as in, like, he would have like hit the ground. Mm. That's why I sat down. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Okay. All right. Uh, there seems to be either someone who is very curious about every door here or is looking for something specific and didn't find it. Though so there is, and I like look down the hallway, the footsteps to head into this open door. The question is what's inside? Mm. Mm. The green door. It's like taunting us. <laughs> and it's um, locked, and I don't know how to open it. Hmm. Oh, sorry, really quickly. There's a di So you had told me there was a door that was a jar. There's a different door that's locked? Yes. The so there's a green door upstairs that you all yes. can kind of see. And that one seems to be locked. Yes. The door that's a jar is downstairs. Downstairs. That's what I thought. Okay. Mm hmm um, may I suggest we take care of the downstairs first in case we get ambushed at the top? Mm. Oh, that's that's 
way smarter. I, I, I'm sorry. Sorry, I've been on many investigations with the police, so this is how we usually do it. Is that is it that obvious? <laughs> Jonathan, you're doing great. <laughs> Before we go, uh, if you um, excuse me for just a second, and I just close my eyes and I begin to speak, but I'm not speaking to any of you. Uh, and I say, um, hey, 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 uh, is anybody around? And if so, are they happy that we're here or? And I'm attempting to talk to Julia, my sister. Okay, great. So make a focus roll and your casting modifier is a minus two. Oh, minus two. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 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 that's a six on that die. So yeah. it's oats. Yeah, yes, it if does. it's a six, yeah. Yeah, re-roll it. Eight. Eight in total. Because it's with the minus two. That is uh, with a raise. So, uh, so you take a moment, you step aside, and you ask, you reach out to Julia to, to see if there's anyone here. And, and Julia comes back and she says, yes. There are multiple spirits in this house. Um, this entire family is here, but they're stuck in specific places. And then she also says, she warns you. She warns you that something else is here, but it's not here all the time. And to just be very, very careful. Uh, and you see him just kind of mm. thanks sis um uh okay well uh good news bad news good news family is here uh julia my my sister i can tell that they're they're in very specific places but she didn't say where however something else likes to be here too it's not always here but she warned me to be careful. Hmm. I would like to try to do one. Now that I'm inside the house, I'd like mm -hmm. to see if I can do another uh, sweep of just the Odic forces in the house. Yeah, yeah certainly. Make, make a focus roll. Okay. Focus. All right. Ooh, seven uh, plus seven oh minus one so six six that's a success so you take a moment and you feel like now that you're in the house you're able to uh tune in a little bit more there's less distractions of the outside and as you you focus you notice there is a lot of energy in this house some of the the, the biggest energy is actually coming from that green door um but you notice it kind of you actually notice it on the footprints and then you notice it coming from the door that is ajar. You notice some, some energy there. It's not quite as strong as the energy at the green door. Um, and you can sense that there's, there's more energy coming from upstairs as well, but you can't pinpoint it quite as much. The, the energy that I'm getting from the footprints, is that a living being or a spirit? It looks like spirit to you. Most oh. of this energy looks like spirit, except you do notice a lot coming off of the tree. And the tree mm. seems to be giving you just anywhere, anywhere where the limbs are coming through. It seems to be giving you mixed messages, which is both that it is living, but also you're getting spiritual uh, energy off of it. Oh, wow. Um, I'm going to relay all that to you all and say, um, so the tracks are actually spirits. I'm not sure if you all were thinking, I, I thought it was living people, but now I'm seeing that it's spirits that are making those tracks. Also, the tree is really interesting because it is both alive and not. I'm getting both senses from it. So we should look at the tree and also, oh, the green door. Yes, the green door is just humming with energy. Oh, the force just up, up the wazoo. But the question is, if it's a spirit, is it them? Since we know there's another Who's visiting? Mm -hmm. But let's let's head to this open door. We're not yeah. going to find out information outside here. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay. 
So you all uh, head towards this open door and you actually notice as you get over there, um, there are more footprints that lead off and it looks like maybe there's a staircase that goes down and those footprints continue, but they also do go into this room. Um, and as you come over to it, you can kind of slightly push the door open and what you see looks to be a study. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and I will say that you all, while you may be a bit new to some of this, there is an energy in this room of some kind. It just, there's an electricity to it somehow. Mm. Do you all want to go inside? Mm -hmm. yes. Sure do. Okay. Um, so as you go inside, um, you see that, again, this is another place in which it looks like they just left everything how it was and never came back. Um, so everyone make me a notice roll. Oh, ho, ho, that's two sixes. Woo! Nice. Three for me. Three? Nine. Okay. Um, Nine? Um, Five? Um, Seventeen. Seventeen. <laughs> okay. So, uh, three, nine, five. Okay. So, Stella, you, you come in and you're just kind of taken by the room. It's it's very mm -hmm. tall. The, the, the walls are covered in, in shelving and books. Um, and you're just kind of caught in, in, in everything that you're seeing. Um, Jonathan, you notice um, that there is a little uh, box nearby. And you, upon opening that box, you see that it is filled with money. Except uh, it, seems to be, it, it seems to be specifically British uh, coin. It's older, but you see that. Um, Shirley, you also notice a bag that is on one of the shelves. And as you open that up, you notice it has Italian money in it. Um, August, you come in, you take a moment, you really take in this entire room and all the things that you are seeing here. Um, and you see another like pile on the desk of money that looks like it is from America. And you also see uh, a, a note and just kind of scanning over that note, you see a few mentions of gambling uh, and just different gambling. You're not quite sure who, but you do see at the bottom uh, written, it's almost like a letter that was sent. Signed on that note is Bertrand Windsor, who you know to be the man of the house. Uh, and uh, Jonathan sort of walks over to August where, uh, August seems to be looking at something and he goes, uh, I, I don't mean to pry, uh, but uh, did you find something? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, well, there's a lot of money here. Uh, I believe Bertrand might have been a gambling man. Uh, I wonder if that got them into any trouble. Two, look. Oh. Uh, I, I found some too, except it, the ones I found were British notes. Eliza, can you, uh, Eliza, can you repeat that? Yeah, I, I didn't hear any of what you just said except for look. Oh, uh, I found money too. It's Italian money. So maybe gambling internationally? Hmm. I know how those gamblers are. They like to go from country to country and, and have different identities. That's how it mm. works. Oh. Maybe that, that would explain at least the different hair, maybe. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe not quite how sick they look. Uh, <laughs> mm. Perhaps for consumption. Hmm? Consumption, maybe? Oh, consumption. I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, um. I'm going to take the biggest swig of coffee um, okay. <laughs> and uh, look around once more. Okay. And I say, um, um, Julia, I'm pretty sure Bertrand's in this room. Um, hmm. Can you ask him if the gambling was a problem or if someone is after him? I may be assistance to that one. I can talk to the dead. 
Yes. So you can talk directly to the dead. My sister talks to him, and that's good enough for me. But if you want to talk to him yourself, be my guest. So if you both want to make focus rolls, sure. um, because Stella, a lot of the information you get is visual. Oh, okay. Then I will join Julia. Okay. Mm, not great. Four. Uh, Four? Four. No. Four? No. Two. Two. Oh, because we subtract it. So two as well. Yes. Trip. <laughs> <laughs> Would you all like to spend any bennies or keep uh, them out? Um, yeah, I let's haven't do it. Used any. Yeah, I'll use a benny. I'll use okay. a benny as well. All Here right. we go. Ooh. I'm using a different dice. Okay, five minus two. No, three. Three, okay. Ooh, ooh, okay, 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 okay. One of those okay. I exploded. Come on, Julia. Um, so six plus uh, nine. Ooh, nice. Julia. Yes. Okay. So, uh, Stella, you take a moment to try to focus and to try and see what, if you can get any images uh, from any of the spirits that may be in this room. But as you focus, you don't know if there's something maybe interfering, but you can't quite get anything. However, August, as you reach out to Julia, you know, sometimes she takes a moment to respond to you. Um, but she does come back and she says, yes, yes, Bertrand is here. And, and he seems sad. And he says that, yes, he, he did gamble. Um, but that's not what this money is from. It, it, and she kind of seems to to the information that you're getting as a little she tells you that he he's it's almost like he's stuck in some kind of loop she says he looks somehow ill and sick and he just he keeps he keeps talking about how he needs more money just if he had more money then his family would have enough to survive and if he just had a little bit more money then then he then then they wouldn't have to live here anymore and they could go back to town and so what you're able to 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 gather and what julia is putting together is it seems that maybe they actually were having a lot of money troubles mm. Mm. um Oh, okay. Uh, um, yeah, N gambling, yes, but not the problem. Money trouble. Hmm. He seems oh. stuck. He can't go on. Maybe like stuck in that in that <sighs> most. Um, yeah. Hmm. But you know, like sometimes a spirit has to do something before they can move on, mm -hmm. and they can't do it right now. Hmm. So Is maybe that's why they need us. Yes. Shirley, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I was thinking out loud, wondering if uh, whatever the other spirit that's here that Julia saw is the thing that's preventing them from doing what they need to do. Uh, all roads are leading toward that direction. And I'll be honest with you, it's not the road I want to go down, but it sounds like it's going to happen. We might Everyone. have one. Oh, yeah. Everyone make a notice roll. Mm -mm. See, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Never five. Four. Five. Five. Four. Five. Okay. Uh, five. Five. All right. Um, you all, ha the door that you came in um, was left open, as you all, I assume, as you all uh, came in. And all at once, you see something pass that doorway out of the corner of your eye. Everyone sees it. Mm -hmm. Hello. That? There is yeah. no response. I'm gonna walk towards the door. Yeah, okay. Same. Okay. And peek through the hallway. You look out Oh, the, the music. <laughs> you don't see anything except those same footprints. Although they might look just a touch fresher. It's here. I don't know what you all can do, but I can handle physical things. 
Just don't be too, and I look directly at Jonathan. Don't be too forward and ready to jump in if you're not prepared for my, what might be. Uh, uh, all right. I, I'll try to be a little bit more careful. I just really want to figure this out, but you're right. I want to figure it out too, but I also want to get out of here alive. So. All right. Is there anything else you all wanted to look at in this room? We know he's stuck here. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, can we take that, uh, the paper that's signed with Bertram? Will you grab that and just hold on to it? Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, August. No, I was I was saying yeah yeah uh, the the he'll he'll have the uh, the paper, um and uh, he'll walk out. But again, if we start to walk down the hallway, he's definitely going to move in front <laughs> just to make sure nothing tries to you know look like well bam anybody. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we appreciate <Sounds> that. <laughs> As you all walk out into the hallway, you don't see anything. Nothing stands out as strange, except occasionally another. Kind of draft blows through the house. Mm. Are the windows open? Yeah. Not that you can see. Are the, is the roof like caving in because of the the tree? Like there's like grooves in it that air can pass through. It's not caving in, but they're definitely. I mean, you can see where the tree is going through the wall, so it is safe to assume that there would be spaces in which uh, a breeze could could come in here and there. Mm-hmm. So that, but could you don't be a- see anything mm-hmm. directly. Okay. And there's multiple paintings on the wall that are covered, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Can I uh, <laughs> take off some of those cover? At least one of them, Wrong. whichever one is close. Oh, um, I think we lost Diana. Hopefully she'll be back in just a moment. Um, yes, you can you can go around and, and take off some of the uh, the covers if you want. Yeah, um, there's one nearby and you pull it off and dust kind of blows into your face. Um, and it looks like uh, actually a painting of this house, um, but it's it looks much nicer than it does now. Hmm. All right. But nice. one thing you do notice, I'll say, uh, the tree, that big tree that has grown into the house, um, isn't isn't in the house here. It's just mm-hmm. a small tree that is is uh, beside it. And actually, in that photo is a man uh, standing with a shovel beside the tree. Oh, uh, is it Mr. Windsor? Do, would I assume it's Miss uh, Bertrand? It doesn't look like Bertrand. No, it looks no. Uh, like somebody else. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, wait, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 wait. Um, we heard about a Molly who was the butler. Does it seem like it could be Molly? Because, no, not, not, see, don't like this. Okay, cool. Come on. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem like Molly either. Molly, uh, you're not sure if Molly was a, a butler, a servant, a maid, uh, you're not sure except that you know a servant in the house also died and was named molly but but no this doesn't this looks honestly as far as you all can tell like a gardener Mm -hmm. maybe or or groundskeeper is there any type of i almost said caption uh is there any type Mm -hmm. of inscription under the the picture or a signature even okay Mm -hmm. no no it's just the the picture is Um, the man smiling as he's no. like standing next to this picture, this little tree, because this tree seems evil. I'm just gonna no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> not smiling. I, I um turn and look at Shirley and say, uh, excuse me, miss. Uh, yes. you seem to have a connection to like energies and things. Mm-hmm. Um that sound is always gonna throw me. Um <laughs> if this tree is important and Potentially, we could assume that uh, this other person might be this groundskeeper. Perhaps the tree is ground zero. Hmm. Yes. Uh, I'd like to get closer to, I, I, I don't know if we're close enough to the trunk, that's probably outside, but get closer to some limbs of the tree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say there's a, there's a, a, it looks like just a little bit part of the limb kind of peeks out through the wall in this hallway that you can see. 
Okay. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and follow the limb back to the trunk of the tree, but inside the house. Mm. Okay. All right. So um, as you kind of follow it, you see that it like kind of goes into the wall and if there's there's kind of a, a living room area there that you're able to kind of walk around and see that in fact there is the limb and then it looks like it kind of curls up into the ceiling uh and your best guess is it is leading upstairs maybe to the green door room mm. um i'd like to do another odic force sweep of the tree okay. like just hone in on the tree really specifically okay okay great make make your focus roll all right Ooh, i got an eight on my d8 Ooh. Ooh. Plus seven 15 minus one 14. wow okay yes that is with multiple raises so um you take a moment now that you're really focusing in on this specific spot you feel like you're getting a clearer sense of everything and this tree is radiating this odic force mm. and it 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 is radiating both living energy and spiritual energy and it seems it almost feels malicious to you in a way although almost malicious like like nature can be to 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 survive is what you're picking up on and again you feel such a strong pull towards that green door mhm mm and do I get any, do I get a sense of a specific individuality to this tree or is it multiple uh, spirits? It's, it's, it's confusing because mm -hmm. there is a strong energy that does feel very individual, but then there are like these little wisps of energy that you would attach to just regular spirits. It's like, it's like somehow they, it almost feels like this, this, this energy of the tree has like swallowed these oh, other wow. energies and they're kind of pushing through every once in a while. Okay. Um, I don't know if they're still in the other room, but I'll call back. Well, the tree. Oh, uh, he did not leave you by yourself. Oh okay. no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So actually, I start to yell this and you're right behind me. I'm like, Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's okay, miss. What 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 did you find? <laughs> well, the tree seems to be swallowing spirits, and it doesn't have a good positive energy. It's it's not good. This tree. Also, I think we do need to try to investigate the green door room soon because a lot of a lot of spirit uh, odic force is pointing up towards there from the tree. But I think this tree is trying to consume other things, other life forces. And if this groundskeeper tended to the tree, mm -hmm. potentially they're trying to tend to it in all ways. I, I, I think there's also another piece that that is sort of strange to me, which is it sounds like the family was in financial straits. Like there was something that they probably owed someone mm -hmm. and they are trapped here. And I'm wondering if this malicious tree that's grabbing spirits as you say is, is probably part of that probably part of a punishment maybe for this family hmm. it does seem like uh, they potentially could be free but this tree is a an evil guardian of some sorts forcing them to stay here forcing hmm. them under their work as you all are having this conversation, you hear a <laughs> sounding like a door has creaked its way open above you. All right, let's head upstairs. <laughs> Be on guard. You see, I like kind of like almost like do like a do stoom, like, you know, just kind of get myself ready. I'm also an athlete, but he doesn't always um, broadcast his athleticism. Um, just, all right, this isn't going to be pretty. And he begins to walk upstairs. Okay. Uh, and you all follow? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, uh, as you head up the stairs, you do see that very obviously this green door has, uh, creaked its way open and is now slightly ajar. 
Oh, okay. Uh, the locked door is now open. And you're saying that the bad energy is coming from in there. It might be safer if I if I check it the room out. If the door's open, it'd be easy to go in. Uh, can, can you I watch? will immediately grab onto your shoulders and say, "Go on in. You're not getting on the ground this time." Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> He, <laughs> that's that's a good call. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's gonna close his eyes, focus. Uh, I'm gonna use a Benny for that. Okay. Who, Lord? Oh, perfect. Those so Bennies. All right. Woo! Eleven minus two, so uh, nine. Nine. Okay, that's with a raise. So you are able to go a little bit further. And you take a moment, you focus, and you feel your spirit move away from your body. And you find yourself in the midst of this room with the green door. And what you see in front of you is the trunk of this tree. And there is a giant knot hole in the middle of it. And that's pretty much all that is in this room is this tree. But you notice in the knot hole, there's something in there. Uh, he's uh, oh, so for those watching at home, he's curious. He's curious to a fault. Major hindrance, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's definitely gonna get closer to that that thing in the knot hole of this tree, even though he shouldn't. Okay. So <laughs> as you get closer, you take a look. It looks like a newspaper article, and uh as you look even closer to that you actually it looks like you might be able to 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 grab it even in this state then i will. would you okay um as you pick it up you look at it and you see this is an article about you this is an article about you having discovered uh a, a spirit and you have actual proof of it and you have gained international fame. And this is an article about how wonderful you are. Uh, that was unexpected. Uh, he, he, he's going to pop back into his body. You feel sort of a, a jolt as he sort of comes back and he's like, um, there's a, uh, the tree is in that room. The, 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 the trunk of it. And, when I was in my astral plane, there was a news article and it said, it said that, and he gets really excited. It said that I had found this, this uh, spirit and that there was international acclaim. And I, I think we're on the right track. I, I think we should uh, definitely go in that room and f find it. Cause if he starts to move, I like clutch his uh, shoulder very tightly <laughs> and I say now I may be learning still in school but if there is a paper that is predicting your future something that hasn't happened yet that sounds like a trap and I pull you back <laughs> Maybe, maybe uh, so. <laughs> Jonathan, you feel a little like you're excited, but you also just feel a little tired. Uh, yeah, may, may, maybe you're right. Um, may, maybe I'll just uh, sit down for a minute. I, I, I kind of need a rest after that. Does this happen a lot when you use your abilities? Uh, not, not. Usually, seems unusual to you. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's very strange. Then what that is telling me is that whatever's in here either decided to sw swallow from you two, mm -hmm. or well, I'm going to push the door open. Okay, I'm still outside, but pushing the door open. <laughs> okay, it. Or if it pulls, I don't know which way it goes. Yeah, it pushes. It creaks open a little bit more, and um, you see this room is is pretty much empty except there is the trunk of the tree with the big knot hole in the center of it, and that's pretty much all in that's in the room. And there's nothing in that knot hole. 
There is nothing in it. Hmm. Stay behind me. But he begins to walk forward. He's not saying stay back. He's saying stay behind. Mm -hmm. um, and he'll walk inside. Okay. And, and, and as he walks inside, he says, this might hurt, Julia, and I apologize. But what's in here? Mm, make a focus roll. Uh, oh. <laughs> One, two. Oh. oh. 15. Oh, 15. So Julia answers you really quickly. And she just says, there's, there's danger in here. There's danger. You shouldn't trust anything you hear. You shouldn't take anything. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's something to do with the tree. And, 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 and I think the tree has control of some, some other things, but I'm, but I'm unsure, but it is definitely dangerous. And it definitely has a bad intent. So she kind of like, you get a, a lot of information all at once, very fast from her, which is unusual. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, yes, very bad, very bad tree. Um, and you actually notice mm -hmm. as you are continuing to look around the room that there is something in that knot hole. I know not to trust, but I want to see what it is. Okay. So as you uh, get a little closer, it looks like like a letter that is addressed to August. So Jonathan, you saw a newspaper. Yeah, yeah, I did. And now I'm seeing a letter addressed to me. Shirley, be... Uh, yeah. Would you mind looking at the tree? Don't get too close, but uh, is there something you see in there? I look in the knot hole. So as you get a little bit closer to it, um, you do in fact see something in the knot hole and it looks like a stack of papers um, that says, it, it, as you get a little closer, it has your name on it and it looks like the title is something like um, Spirits Discovered Evidence Proven by Shirley Ann Stevens. Does it look like a, an academic paper? That yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yes, I, I see something in there with my name on it. Uh, we're all seeing different things with our names on them. Yeah, I still feel tired. Um, don't don't go near it, is what I'd say. And I, I, I look at August, who definitely wasn't going to, but he still says it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this might be pulling at a string, but I'm not sure. The paper mm -hmm. that had Bertrand's name on it, mm -hmm. does it have the same? Actually, I go, I look at Shirley. Mm -hmm. I say... Mm -hmm. Does this paper have the same vibe as what you get from inside this tree? Mm. Uh, can I roll for that? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, you could do. You could use the odic force if you want and make yeah. a focus roll. Mm -hmm. Let me let me think about that, and I'm gonna focus in on it and roll my odic force, my focus. Because now he's wondering if they all took something from the tree. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oops. Oh crap. I'm sorry. I have dice in there already. Didn't see what I wrote. Um, <laughs> no worries. Sorry. I'm that. Uh, ooh, yes. D8 exploded. Ooh. Let's go. So eight plus five, 13 minus one, 12. 12. Yes. So you take a moment to, to focus your energy, focus your attention to see if you can glean the Odic force here. And you do, in fact, get a huge reading off of this. It's the exact same feeling you got specifically from the tree. It's it's like mm -hmm. it's like these items are the tree themselves. Like it's a piece of the tree. Wow. Yes, very much so, August. These papers come from the tree itself, and they have the same spiritual force. Mm. Then, um. 
you hear his voice begin to start to shake. Hmm. Um, do any of you have uh, a match? Hmm. Uh, I didn't bring one with me. Yeah, I'm I, sorry. I will say actually, Shirley, that you have candles. So oh. I think it would make oh, sense that goodness. you would have matches on you. Yeah. I do have some with me. <laughs> Here <you go. laughs> um, I'm <clears throat> actually, uh, I'll hold it out. Would you mind doing the honest? And you see that I'm like backing away from what might happen. Mm. And it's not because of the paper. <laughs> I light the match and light the paper. Try to light the paper on fire. You try. But mm. before you can, a, a breeze comes through and blows the match out. Uh, rude. <laughs> the audacity. <laughs> <laughs> well, more than just sucking life energy, it's also... Stopping us from figuring things out. It doesn't well, want to burn the paper. Jonathan sort of push pulls himself up off the off the ground and, and, and he goes, That paper was in the study where Bertram was, right? Mm -hmm. What if there are different items that the others have taken in the other rooms? Oh, I yes. There's there's no possible way that's not probably what's going on. Then, well, wouldn't we want to gather those items, figure out a way to destroy? I mean, obviously, we can't just burn it. Uh, uh, but at least having them together, we, we can figure out what to do. Right. Welcome back, Stella. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I don't even want to it's tell okay. you what's going on because I'm very mad at someone who lives with me right now. Oh, no. It's that. okay. Oh. It's okay. Let me catch you up real quick. Um, they have gone into the room with the green door and found the tree and within the... Okay. I think we lost her. Oh, there oh, she is. I'm back again. Oh, that's okay. Uh, it was in the, the tree. They discovered um, some different papers with their different names on them and then tried to burn one and something blew it out. And that's about about where we are now. OK, thank you. So uh, it sounded like you all wanted to try and go into some of the other rooms. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, 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 we, yeah, yeah. OK, Lot, lots of spooky stuff, but potentially let's go into the other rooms to see if we can get any other items. Okay, so mm -hmm. where you all are here at this green door, um, there are footprints that lead off in both directions from you. So where would you all like to go? Wh which one was the way the study was? Uh, that one's downstairs. The study okay, was downstairs. So then, yeah, the, uh, do you guys have a preference? The next room we see. Right. What, I guess what if it's closer? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, to 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 the left, uh, the footprints lead off, and there is a room that's just kind of right on the corner. So that would be the closest one. Okay. So, as you all head over, this door is also slightly ajar. Would you like to push it open? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everything so. else in me is saying no, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you 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 push it open, and as you do, you notice that this appears. To be a child's bedroom. We chose the creepiest. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go inside? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, as you all go inside, you you look around, and um, again, it's another room that looks like it has been completely left as it was. Um, it has toys everywhere. Uh, everyone, make a notice roll. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a five. I got a seven. Five. A seven. Four. Eleven. Wow. Ooh. Five. Eleven. Seven, four and eleven. Okay. So uh, you all come into this room, and uh, Jonathan, you notice that this looks like because you see kind of a, a a closet with some clothes in it. it. Looks like a little girl's room. So you uh, assume that it is Penny Windsor's room. Um. August, 
you notice uh, that where might go? Um, that there is a a pile of of books um, in this room that all have Penny's name on them, and it looks like they are. As you kind of look through them, it's Penny fights a dragon. Penny goes on a grand adventure. They're all like all these different books with it looks like Penny being the main character. The book seems to be about Penny. Um, Diana, you notice uh, that um, there is, uh, beside her bed, there looks to be some different medicines and um, some different sort of medical equipment that you have seen in situations in which someone has been ill for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, surely you notice a story um, and it is called The Night Gardener by Hester Kettle. Kettle. And, and as, as you, you open it up, up there's just a small little um, paragraph in here that you read that says, says long ago, there was a gardener who grew, who grew the most beautiful flowers that only bloomed in the night. He was able to grow flowers and plants in places that no one else had been able to. Among the plants in his garden was a beautiful tree. This tree wished to grow big and tall, and the tree promised the gardener that it would grant all his wishes if the gardener promised to always help the tree grow big and tall. The gardener told the tree that he wished to live a long life, so the tree told him that it could grant him this wish as long as he helped the tree grow big and tall. The two agreed, and the gardener did everything the tree asked of him. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I hold up. Yes. What Can you repeat the, that again? I I hold up the book to you all, and I say, "What we all is, have been suspecting looks like it's laid out in this picture book. Hmm. The tree and the gardener have some kind of pact or bond, where the tree is convincing the gardener to maybe harvest souls for it, help it grow big and strong." Mm. Unhealthy relationship, if you ask me. As you say that to everyone and you pass this information along, you hear footsteps walking. It sounds like maybe downstairs, oh. and it sounds like they're getting closer. I'm going to tuck the picture book into like my waistband behind me. Okay. I'm gonna take a nice old gulp of this coffee. Okay. Take it off. I'm gonna put this cup down. <clears throat> this is the part I wasn't excited about, but you know when you find out information and then the thing doesn't want you to find out any more information. Yeah. You continue to hear those footsteps. It now sounds like they are on the stairs. Mm. Should we meet in the hallway? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you all go out into the hall. And, and as I go, as I go in the hall, I, I I will say, listen up. I don't know who you think you might be um um messing with. <clears throat> But I can tell you we are one, two, three, four, not the ones. So <laughs> do so what as, you must. As, as you say that, that you, you see, see this large top hat. hat. All, All you, you can, can see is the top hat, hat and it is starting, starting to come up the stairs. And, and as it does, a man steps onto the stairs, turns around and opens his mouth wide and just yells at you. A couple other things you notice, all of you, you see this is the same man from the painting you saw, saw downstairs next to the tree. And he's holding that same bucket that you all saw downstairs as well. Now, as he yells, a huge gust of wind comes blowing at all of you. And we will move into a combat. So, no! this gust of wind, <laughs> this gust of wind, yeah. Uh, let's, let's see, see what, what it might do to you all real quick. So, okay. Ah, okay. So that is a success. 
us. Um, so you all need to make a strength roll. So everyone, you will have your strength, make a roll, whatever your strength die type is, with uh, your wild die. <laughs> Four. Four. Five. Four. Uh, Four. Five. Okay, so this wind comes blowing at you and you kind of feel yourselves start to fall back, but you're able to hold on and keep from going too far. Um, Jonathan, though, for some reason, the wind doesn't seem to push you as much, which kind of leaves you uh, standing a bit forward. You're now the closest to this man and he starts to walk over towards you. So we're going to go into initiative. Did I get pushed so, back too or no? Sorry. Just a little bit. Not much, like maybe a step or so back. You all didn't get moved back very far. Okay. Um, all right. For Savage Worlds, initiative is handled with a deck of cards and we will re-roll for each round. Uh, so let me get my deck of cards here. I'm going to start with Jonathan. You will get the first card. You are going to get a five of spades. And then, Shirley, you have a three of diamonds. Uh, August, you have a three of hearts. Uh, Stella, you have an ace of spades. And our friendly uh, uh, man here has a ten of hearts. Definitely now, I'm not also... Uh, August, <laughs> I, I think, know. has fast making. Oh, you're right. You have quick. Uh, quick, August, yeah. you I do too. I do too. Oh, 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 you said August, lol. Yeah, yeah. yeah which means <laughs> you get another draw. Oh, a queen of uh, spades. Thank you, Randy, for that. Yes. Thank you. you one. Um, so uh, the way this works is we go from the highest card first and we go down uh, from there. Uh, you also can spend a Benny to get a new card if anyone would like to do that. And I'm going to grant everyone another Benny uh, for all of your amazing role play before we get into combat here. Hey. Everyone has an extra one. All right. Uh, that, so that's, that's scary. <laughs> First up will be Stella. So Stella, now in this combat, you can do a lot of various different things. You can obviously attack. Everyone can attack unarmed. Um, or if you have something you want to attack with. But you can also do other things, um, like you could try to affect the room. You could try to give a negative to the opponent by using a test. And a test could be something like you try to taunt him or you try to intimidate him, and that could give him some negatives. Um, so those are a few things to consider. Stella, what would you like? Is there anything? Um, and being someone who has spoken to spirits or if this thing is a spirit, let me see if I can push it away from us or make him feel bad for what he's doing. Okay, I will also say you could use your power to glean more information if you wanted to do that as oh, well. Oh yeah, let me do that. Okay. All right, make a focus roll. At a minus two. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, this one fell out. Uh, I'm gonna use a Benny, the Benny you just okay. gave us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, not great. Five minus two. Th yeah, three. Mm -mm. Three. So you take a moment, you try to focus, but there's just so much happening that you are unable to uh, to access any images or any more information. The other thing you can do during your turn is move. You can move up to your pace. Would you like to, to move at all? No. I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> okay. One other thing for you all to know is that you can do multi-actions. So if you wanted to take two actions, you need to say that before you uh, do any action because it's going to put you at a minus two for both actions. So it's just something to know as well. All right. So that was Stella. Next up will be August. August then let's go. Let, let's go ahead and do that. Because what happens is as I'm rolling up my sleeves, I say, uh, hey, uh, Julia, if you don't want me to, you know, be like you, can you please let me know anything about this person that might help me when I punch the living daylights out of them? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so you're going to make a focus roll and you will have your casting modifier negative and then an additional minus two. Minus so two. Yeah, yeah, that'll yeah. put you at a minus four. It's not going to be good. We'll see. Uh, well, that's that. That's one ace. That's Ooh, a six nice. plus. And I don't add the other one, right? I get six plus. Yes, no, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, just another six. 
Oh, that's what uh, you needed. Uh, good job, good job, good job. Going. Two, so 14 minus four, 10. <laughs> 10. Yeah, uh, Julia is, seems to be very keen to give you as much information as possible. And she says, she says, August, the tree, the tree is his weakness. You, you must kill it from the inside. Oh. Kill it from the inside, like. Otherwise, it will stop you. Gotcha. <clears throat> then I say. Then as I'm as I'm about to uh, head up, I say, um, "This isn't me trying to be the big man, but go get the tree. I'll hold him off. Okay. Get it from the inside." And then I run towards him, and I try okay. to punch. <laughs> okay, as hard I as love I can. it. Make a fighting roll. I'm I'm a fighter now. <laughs> this is the first time I've rolled a non six this game. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, all right. Big money for gunning. No whammies. No whammies. Ooh, that's a se- do I add in- seven. Okay. A seven. Okay, let's see here. Uh, that is going to hit. So in Savage Worlds, the first thing you have to do is hit their parry. This parry happens to be seven, so that means you get to roll damage. So for your damage, you're just going to be rolling your strength. So whatever your strength die is, you're just gonna roll that no wild die. Gotcha. Uh, four. Four. Uh, so the next thing you have to get past in combat is uh, the enemy's toughness. Now his toughness happens to be a six, which means when you go to punch him, it's almost like he kind of phases out of existence and your hand just goes straight through his mm. face. Valid. I guess go, I can do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there any? Did you want to move or anything? Or are you good where you no, are? No, I'm saying I'm saying where I'm saying with him because I don't okay. want him to get to the other ones. Aww. Okay, perfect. So then next up is going to be him, and <laughs> because, <laughs> because you are here, uh, he doesn't seem overly excited about that. Uh, you're in his way, and he kind of yells at you. His mouth opens too wide, and he is going to try to hit you right back with this bucket. So let's see what is your bucket. You can slap with a bucket. bucket. <laughs> is it a metal bucket or a wooden bucket? It's a metal bucket. Ow. Rip. That's <laughs> going, yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, he did horribly. I'm gonna oh, spend oh. one of his bennies because he does have two because he is a wild card. <laughs> he's a well, come right. on, come on. I know, I know, I know, I know. You're fine. It's okay, ah. August is tough. Okay. He got a four. What is your parry, August? Six. Yes. Six. So he he comes back and tries to hit you, but you're too fast. You're able to just get out of the way before he's able to hit. But what he does next is he tries to go around you, and it looks like he's trying to go towards Jonathan. Oh, now in Savage Worlds, when somebody when you are engaged in melee and they go past you, that means you get an attack of opportunity, so you can make another fighting roll against him, August. The audacity of trying to get by me. <laughs> can this, I don't know uh, how flexible it is. Can it be less of an attack, more of a grab to like try to keep him from moving or will he move regardless? Um, Sure, that would be a, a touch attack basically. So um, you would get a plus two to your fighting roll. So go ahead and, and do that and add your plus two. Uh, so I aced on the eight plus four plus two? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. So let's say 14. Ooh, okay, well, this wow. is a roll, and it sounds like he's going to have a hard time opposing <laughs> that. So let's find out. So this would be agility. Come on, August. Yeah. Come on. Ooh, ooh, he aced it on both sides. Stop. Ooh, a really high one. Oh, he aced it again. Okay, so oh. 12. Okay, he, yeah. wow. This wow. is Megan Cage. He ended up with a 15. <laughs> a 15, literally oh. one over. So you try to grab, and he, again, it's almost like you, you <sighs> almost grab through him like he's not even completely solid, and he just continues towards Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. How far now, is he? Just He's not quite up against you yet, okay. but he would be able to, like, he's like two steps away from you. Yeah. Um, and you are next. What would you like to do, Jonathan? Oh, uh, I, I'm going to run to the tree. <laughs> okay. I was told to go to the tree and I've stayed away from creepy guy with bucket. So, <laughs> okay. Um, bucket man. How far so, off from the tree am I? Yeah. 
you could, I, I would say you can make it to the door um, okay. this round, but you're going to have to go past him to do that. And he would get an attack of opportunity on you because this hallway is not very big. Mm. He is in the way. Yeah. I'll say if you run, so so this is another thing you can do in, uh, in combat is you can choose to run instead. For a run, you roll whatever, you roll a d6 unless you have something special. I don't think any of you do. And you add that to your pace. So I'm I would say slow, if you did that, so... oh yeah, so that would slow you down. <laughs> I think your yeah. run die is a d4 actually. Yeah. So, um, and th those don't ace. Um, but I would say you could get into the room. You just couldn't quite get to the tree if you wanted to run. All right. Yeah, I'm going to run. Okay. So, so make your, your d4 roll, no wild die, it, no acing. Uh, that's a three. A three. So on to whatever your pace is currently, uh, you can five. move that much. So eight. Okay, so you can go eight. Yeah, I'll say you can definitely get in the room. You just can't quite get to the tree yet. Um, but he is going to take an attack of opportunity on you, trying to sideswipe you with that bucket. He's going to uh, get me. I'm weak. <laughs> no. <laughs> Find out. Uh, okay, what is your um, parry? It's a two. Oh. Okay, he, he got a five, so that is a success. Yeah. So he's going to roll his strength. Uh, what is your toughness? Five. Five, he got a seven. So you are going to be shaken. It does not have a raise. It's not going to cause a wound. Uh, when you're shaken, you cannot do anything except defend or move until you unshake. And you can do that with a vigor roll on your turn or by spending a Benny at any point. All right, uh, so that will be it. For now, I will say when you are shaken, you are more uh, susceptible to taking a wound, to taking damage. Um, all right, that was your turn. Next up is Shirley. Shirley, what would you like to do? Well, I'm also heading for the tree and I have my matches in hand. Oh, I like it. Okay. So yeah, right. trying to get to the tree. Is it a, like a move and an action type of deal? So are you wanting to try to uh, get to the tree and then light the match on this turn? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I would say, I would say you could, you would take a minus, can you run and do that? I, I would let you run and then you would take a minus two at trying to strike the match. I'll say oh. that. And you would also be going past this guy so he would get an attack mm -hmm. of opportunity. Okay. Okay. All right. So make a, okay. uh, a run roll, which should just be a d6. It won't, will not ace. Okay. Uh, I got a six. Oh, six. Perfect. Then you can, I'm going to say you can get all the way to the tree. Um, now he's going to take this attack of opportunity on you real quick. Mm -hmm. Try to swing that bucket. Uh, what is your <laughs> parry? A four. So he got a four, so that is a success. Um, so we'll see if he does any damage. What is your toughness? Five. Five. He got a three. So as uh, he swings that bucket at you, you're able to duck out of the way and he misses you and you can get past and get into the room. Um, so let's see, to activate that match let's just make that an athletics roll or if you would rather i would i would i would loosely this is kind of loose but i would grant you a cult as well if you'd rather use a cult either one i would love to use a cult especially because i don't know if this tree is gonna just like let me so i think i'll probably have to trick it <laughs> okay okay i love it so uh you're going to make that roll at a minus two okay here we go big money big money oh my goodness I got an eight on the D8. Oh, Whoa! yes. Reroll it. Uh, I love when the eights explode. Seven. Uh, minus two. So that's 13. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say, I mean, you did so well. You're able to kind of turn in such a way. I mean, you don't know what kind of eyesight the tree might have, but you're trying to protect the match and make sure that nobody can get at it. Uh, and you are successful at doing that. All right, good job, you guys. Uh, next round, we're gonna do a new deal. So starting off for Jonathan, you have an ace of clubs. Uh, for Shirley, you've got a four of clubs. For August, a two, but you can't have that because you're quick. How about instead a nine of diamonds? I'll take a, dime, a nine. All right, and then an ace of diamonds for uh, Stella and for our friendly guy here, he's got a queen of diamonds. Ah, he uh, he's friendly. rolling too high. He is. So, anyone want to spend a Benny to try a new card? Or are you good? I'll do I it. Got, I got a okay. nine. I, okay. I, I, mm. Spending a Benny for a new card for Sh uh, Shirley. And you got a seven of diamonds, which is a little better than a four. 
All right. Anyone else? But no, everybody else got aces and queens. So it's like almost oh, no point. <laughs> I think the bucket man should should get another card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe maybe card? bucket man should. should yeah. Be yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay, so we've got diamonds and we've got clubs. We go in reverse alphabetical order, which means that Diana, you are going to be. Oh, again. Hello. Yes, okay. Would you like? To do? I need to follow orders and run past this guy as well. Okay, so make a run roll. Oh, that was uh, agility, D6. was it? It was D6, just one D6, no oh, easy, no, no wild back. Yeah. Okay, one D6. Two. Two. Okay, I'm going to say that you're able to get to the, you're able to get into the room, but you aren't able to get to the tree, and he will take an attack of opportunity on you because you're running past him. Uh, what is your um, parry? Four. Four. He got a four, so he does succeed at that. Let's see if he does any damage. What is your toughness? Toughness five. He got a four, so um, you follow in Shirley's uh, footsteps and duck just as soon as he comes <laughs> through with that bucket, <laughs> and you're able to miss. Doesn't hit you. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, that'll be it for you. Okay. So the next step is going to be Jonathan. Which means I need a bigger roll to unshake, right? Yes, you do. As a matter of fact. I think it's spirit, actually. Oh, spirit? I always, yes, I always get those two mixed up. Got it. But it's fine, either way. Just uh, just succeed. I, I got a five. So okay, that's a success. Uh, all right, so looking at uh, sort of Shirley starting that match, he's going to go over to the tree. He wants to do a cult and see if there's like a place where the tree seems more vulnerable. Like he's looking mm. to try to figure that out. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Make it a cult roll. All right. Uh, uh, that would be a two, but I'm going to re-roll that. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, that's a five thing. A five. That's a success. It was a that's five a and a one, and I was terrified. <laughs> So you go over and, and you look at the tree and you try to think about the information that you, you, you've, you've learned, you've tried to study and understand how things often work, how items, whenever they are magical or whatever it is that may be happening with this tree. And you're pretty sure that the main weakness of this tree is also where it offers up all of your wishes and all of its gifts, and that is the knot hole itself. I, I'm going to tell Shirley that whatever we do, we got to attack that. Okay. Anyway. He's just gonna have his his turn around back towards the door and sort of bracing himself because he he got the feeling that that uh, bucket man uh, has it in for him because I mean he knows why. Well, <laughs> yeah, you took something from the tree, so. Uh, all what right. did you take? Yeah. May uh, I ask? You took it. I did in spirit form. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you picked it up. Yeah. <laughs> what did you take? I'm sorry. Uh, a, was... a newspaper with my name on it. A news oh. article about it. It said okay. I like did amazing things. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Well, that's good. What well, you wished no. for. Yeah. Um, all right. Next up will be August. Oh, I oh, thought there was the, no, the spirit. You're right. You're right. It's the spirit. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. So um, you you notice this 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 uh, night gardener. Um, he turns around and it's like he's trying to turn around away from you and he's going towards the door it specifically looks like he's following jonathan so that's mm. going to give you another uh, attack of opportunities you can make a fighting roll it surely will <laughs> <laughs> oh, echo echo oh yeah, yeah. yep yep <laughs> for fighting that is a seven a seven, that yeah. is going to hit, get through his parry. So make a damage roll. You're just going to roll your strength. Yep. Um, get him uh, in the face. Five. Five. Okay. His uh, toughness is a six. So once again, oh, as you try to swing at no. him and hold on, it's just like you go straight through him. Like he goes incorporeal. 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 I can't say that word. Uh, it's fine. I got you next time. <laughs> he continues to walk ahead. All right, that was his turn. Now it is your turn, August. Now I'm going to go at him and, like, I want to, like, almost, like, go up and, like, choke hold him to, like, keep him from moving. But I'm still trying to, like, hurt him as much as possible. 
Okay, I like that. Let, that sounds very similar to what kind of trying to grapple essentially. So let's do yeah. that as a touch attack. So fighting and add a plus two. Yep. Yeah. Uh, nine. <laughs> nine. Uh, yeah, that is a success. So this is going to be an opposed roll with his strength. And yep. he got a five, which isn't enough. So that means that you currently have him, you, you were able to grab on and for whatever reason, he didn't seem to, to kind of like disappear into smoke this time. Uh, and you have him bound, which means that he is distracted, which means that until he can get out of being bound, he's going to be at a minus two to anything he does. Mm. So that is super yeah. helpful. Yeah, right. I'm just like holding him by his neck and I'm like, burn the tree. <laughs> Even if I don't like it. <clears throat> All right, I love it. All right, Shirley, it is your turn. You have this match, mm -hmm. and you're trying to keep it from getting blown out. What would you like to do? Yeah, I hear burn the tree, and I'm like, I'm on it. I'm on it. And I, yeah, I <laughs> scarily stick my hands in the knot hole because I don't want it to like be snuffed out, and then just drop it straight down. Okay, Ooh. let's do this. We're gonna make this as an opposed roll. So let's make. Uh, I'll let you do a cult again. So okay. make an occult roll. All right. Could you say that again? She said all right. Oh, I can't hear her. Got a six plus two. Sometimes your microphone gets real quiet and I don't know why. Um, um, six plus two, eight plus two or minus two? Uh, 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 no plus no this plus. time. Oh, okay. Unless you have plus. <laughs> nope. Okay. So uh, eight total. Eight total. All right. All right. Here we go. We're going to see. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, the tree um, trying to save its own life uh, didn't didn't want you to do this, but oh. only rolled a one. So uh, <laughs> you see the match and you're able to move fast enough and drop it down. And as it does, you hear this screeching sound and you hear the, the, the whole house starts to move and creak as it looks like the tree is starting to light uh -oh. on fire in all places and almost like it's starting to move. August, as you're there trying to hold on to this night gardener by his neck, you see him, he starts to burst into ashes and flame and he screams loudly. And you all notice that the house is starting to crumble around you and you have to get out now. So everyone, make me a run roll with your run die. That would be a D6 for all of you except for Jonathan. Mm. So my phobia is kicking in most likely as well. It is, yes. And let's, so that means you're going to be at a minus two to anything you do. I'm going to use my re-roll. Can I use my re-roll on a one? Yes. Oh yes. I got yes. a four. The and best I can get. And we're rolling <laughs> okay, what five. time? We're rolling a D6. Five. Okay. I got a six. Yeah. So six? I'm, uh, mm, oh, I'm gonna use a Benny. Okay. Because I have to. Okay. It wasn't better. Oh, oh it wasn't no. better. It was a oh, one. No. It's a one. Okay. All right. So as you all, you all start to run, surely you take off really fast and you're able to get to the front door. Uh, Diana, what did you, uh, Stella, what did you roll again? Five. A five. Um, you are not quite out, but you are right behind Shirley. Jonathan, you got a four? I got a four plus my, well, uh, I'm running, so four plus my pace, right? So that would be uh, nine. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So you are able to get to the bottom of the stairs, but August, you are getting overwhelmed by all of the fire. And oh, wait, do you add your running. ace? Do you, you add your pace to the, yes, the roll? Yes, add your pace. Oh, I didn't oh. add your oh. <laughs> Okay, so I'm still 11. one... Okay. Seven minus two is five. Okay, good. Okay, good. good. All right. <laughs> you, are able, you, August, you start to go down the stairs, but not before uh, there are beams and branches that are starting to fall all around you and they are lit on fire and you are getting so overwhelmed and nervous and, and it, it's triggering, triggering this phobia for you and, and, and everyone has run ahead of you. Um, so... Let's do one more roll to see if everyone can get outside of the house. Surely you have already succeeded at getting out of the house. For this roll, I'm gonna say you need at least a two on top of your pace to successfully escape this house. So, so I need to everyone, lose an eight. 
Yeah. Everyone. Can, can I, uh, is there any way to assist August? Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, yeah, I will say. I got a six on my die. I'm fine. <gasps> I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, okay. Stella <laughs> and, and Jonathan, what did you all roll? I got a total. I got an eight. eight. Okay, I'm gonna, then, then you all were able to, August, you, you, you were able to take a moment and you heard Julia speaking to you and, and she oh. said, get up, get up, you can do this, you can make it out. And with that, that extra uh, bolster from your sister, you were able to take a deep breath without inhaling too much smoke and make it out of the house. And Jonathan, you turned back to make sure that everyone else had come and so did you, Stella. And Shirley, you were looking back, yelling at all of them to get out and you are able to successfully get out of the house and get further away from it. And when you turn back to look at it, you see the house has gone up in flames. The night man, the, the night gardener is no longer there. August, you saw him burst into ash and flames as the tree started to go down. But one thing you all do see, you see the family in, in their spirit form. They come to the door and they look at all of you and they smile and they look up and they start to drift into the sky. You all successfully discovered what happened to this family and you are able to help them find peace. Good Yay! job, Psychic. This was a very successful investigation. Okay, so now we gotta escape it. because there's a house that's burning down and the police gonna yeah. be coming. Yeah, <laughs> definitely wanna get out of there. Did we discover what was in that green door? While yeah, I was it was gone. the tree, that was the tree. It was the tree, that oh, was the tree room. Okay. Yes, thank you all again so much for joining me for this. I know it was such a quick game, but I still had so much fun playing with you. This was a blast. Um, let's go around real quick. Tell them uh, where they can find you and anything else you wanted to bring up uh, in the uh, plug or anything like that. Um, let's start with you, Randy. Yeah, uh, so hey everybody, I'm uh, Randy Alvarenga. You can follow me on Twitter at RollerRaja. That's R-O-L-L-E-R-R-A-J-A. Uh, I am currently every Tuesday night playing a witch in uh, Megan's Harbingers game with Diana as well. And um, it's it's a great time. So you can find those on the DAT network. And then there's some old episodes of All, All Games No Masters here on Saving Throw Show that you can watch as well. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Aliza, you as well. Hi. Hello. I am uh, Aliza Pearl. You can find me at Aliza Pearl, A L I Z A at on twitter and instagram i run games i play games i do a lot of game stuff um every saturday we're on a short two-week break right now but i run a DD 5e campaign called lords of Faerun. that's saturdays on twitch.tv slash kira 858 um, i'm also in a mini series this weekend uh gen con weekend that is on the bear pen and it's uh, a mage the ascension game and that was my first time it's my first time playing that that's yeah. yeah. that's very fun it's called the haunting of mallory murgo it's kind of spooky like this Ooh. Um, and then i have a ton of things that are happening this weekend for gen con online uh, including the double clicks i'm part of their musical and we're premiering four songs from that show <gasps> friday evening so oh that's the, so cool yeah i'll read graphics so go follow me and you can see the links to all of that stuff awesome thank you so much uh diana tell them where they can find yes. you yes hi friends you can find me at at diana rest three on twitter and instagram i'm also on the harbinger show with randy and megan on tuesday nights on the dat network um, you can also find me this Saturday on Ladies of D&D Twitch channel for their suicide prevention hotline. Um, we're, we are playing fairies, so it's Faye, uh, I think it's the Faye Wild. It's a charity stream. Come check it out. I believe it's 5, um, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. I have to double check that, but just follow my <laughs> socials and I'll let you know because there was some confusion with the timing that keeps changing. So, But just follow me and I'll let you know. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And Omega, tell them where they can find you. Of course. Hi again. Uh, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard. Critical Bard across all social media channels. I do way too much, so I just try to say these quickly and fast. <laughs> okay. uh, tomorrow over on my channel, twitch.tv slash Critical Bard, uh, is the next episode of Let's Get Wild Mount, which is a D&D &D, uh, campaign using Critical Wild Mount setting. 
on Sunday over on Twitch.tv slash INDG is Dungeons and Durags, which is an all black DD campaign that Ooh. I DM. Uh, on Mondays, I am part of a Curse of Straw campaign run by Realmsmith. On Wednesdays, I am on uh, Dice X Machina here on Saving Throw Show. And on Friday, oh, I forgot about Friday. And on Friday on Rock <laughs> Plant JTL, I play uh, in a uh, game, uh, a DD campaign using the Islands of Cena Una uh, setting oh. Uh, oh, cool. called Tempo. Uh, other than that, I am a Twitch partner. I am a variety streamer. I do way too much. Uh, I love playing uh, Dead by Daylight and other games and just having a good time. Just follow me on my socials. There's a lot of things that are happening that I can't talk about because NDA. And yeah, because very excited to be here, uh, staying booked and busy. That's me. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Uh, I am Megan Caves. You can catch me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Megan Caves, Facebook at Megan Caves Actor. Uh, you can catch me on Tuesdays, although this Tuesday we are dark, uh, but running Harbingers, it is Savage Worlds. If you like this kind of tone, it has a similar tone, but it's a little witchier. And uh, the setting is hidden. So if you know Savage World settings, come check it out. A lot of you have started to discover it. Um, but that's the main thing you can find me on for right now. Check into my social media. Uh, there's other things that are coming down the line that I can't talk about as well either yet but uh, i'm very excited about them um thank you all again thank you to gen con for having us thank you saving throw for uh bringing mysterium back for today thank you to my lovely cast i really am so glad you all were able to do it you you guys were a wonderful bunch um i think that's it everyone uh just wanted to leave you with this mm. you have to be careful what you wish for mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. We'll see you later. Bye, Bye friends. Bye. Thank you. Rip.